Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the eyedropper tool and swatches in Photoshop. Theme tune! Do 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 do! Eyedropper tool! Do 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 do! Ooh, butterfly! Butterfly from the eyes! Butterfly! <laughs> That's my eyedropper butterfly, whatever that is. Anyway, so <clears throat> In Photoshop, you're always going to be using the eyedropper tool to select colors, and you're going to want to keep on using the same colors over again. So you've got swatches, and they're really, really simple things to use. But there's some nice little shortcuts that you can use, but also it's way more powerful than what you would think of just like, okay, I select white and then paint white. You can do loads of things with this. So let's jump into Photoshop and have a look. Now remember, this is part of my Photoshop training course. Get the entire training course over on photosincolor.com. So here we are. Inside Photoshop, we're gonna use this photo that I took a few years ago in Paris. Um, now if you wanna use this file, you'll get it if you have the complete course from Photos in Color. Now essentially, eyedropper tool, what is it? Well, you get to it by hitting the letter I and it's gonna load it up like so. And also it's this little item on the left-hand panel, panel called eyedropper. Now essentially, what we want to look at here is these two items. You've got a foreground and a background color. Now if I click on something here, you're gonna see it's gonna change my foreground color to whichever color I select. Now this, this look is what we're looking at is the traditional look. Now if you want a more pre precision tool, hit caps lock and then it brings up this kind of a target thing and it's whatever is in the target on the inside is what you're selecting. Now, this is pixel perfect. So it is picking the exact pixel that you click on and making it that color. Now, you can also see I have my color panel over here on the right hand side and that's actually gonna place it within this and it's gonna show me which color I exactly am selecting. Now, if you don't see the color panel here, you just have to go window and select color there and it will drop it over here. Now, some people like to have it in their panel over on the side here so you can click it and bring it out. I personally, because I use it so much, I like to have it over on my side panel here. So, as I said, this is pixel perfect. All you're doing is selecting it. Now, a few other things that you will notice with this. As I click, you've got two different sides to this circle. The bottom side of it is the color which is currently selected that I currently have on my swatches. The top one is what I'm gonna change that color to. So it's basically a little reference so you can see if you wanted a close color, if it's gonna be slightly darker or slightly lighter. So that's a really great reference tool there. Now, as I said, this is pixel perfect, but you can actually change the options within this to be not quite pixel points it's called a point sample, but you can actually change it to be um, 11 pixels by 11 pixels. So now it's taking an average of what I'm selecting. So now if I was to select, say down here, so it's green, but what it's doing is averaging the green with whatever is in 11 by 11 um, pixel area. So for example, let's make this the largest one. Let's make 101 by 101. Essentially that if I select this area, it's gonna make an average of all of those colors. That's essentially what it's gonna do. And if I was to do it over here, it's gonna do an average of those colors. So let's come back to the eyedropper tool by hitting I. Let's deselect by command D. And then by using this, what you can see with my selection now, if I select over here right on the white, it's actually not bringing up pure, it's not bringing up that white because it's averaging all around it and seeing that there's loads of other colors. So that can be really useful um, if you're gonna select a color in the sky or something and you don't want to, if there's lots of variants or you've got artifacts in there. But 99% of the time, you're just gonna leave it on point sample. Now the next option you have is how many layers is it going to do? Now, most of the time, um, you're gonna wanna have it on either current layer or all layers. Now current layer means it's only gonna sample the layer that we are on. So for example, if we have this layer, you can see it's only sampling this color white. And if I was to move my opacity down and then select all this, it's still only sampling the color white. Whereas if I was to go all layers and then I sample, you can see now what it's doing is now it's allowing that color 
to come through because it's actually looking through all of these layers and it's more like what you're seeing. So there's different uses for that. Now, the other two bottom ones here are really important. If, for example, you're gonna have this like this, then you're gonna add an adjustment layer and you're going to, I don't know, let's do something crazy like this on it. Okay, now, if you wanted to sample, okay, say all layers, now what we're gonna get, everything's going to land Oh, let's not be all layers, let's delete that layer. It's gonna bring, everything's gonna be in this blue tone because that's what we added in. But we don't always want that, we want that to stay on the adjustment layer because now if we were to paint, for example, let's paint on this layer. Um, bear with me. So now we're gonna paint that color because that's the color we've selected. But if we turn off the channel mixer, we've still got this blue so it's not keeping that same feeling of the image. So instead, even with this selected, I can actually go eyedropper tool by clicking I, and I can just go all layers but no adjustments. So that means that what it's doing now is it's selecting everything, it's looking at everything, but it's ignoring any adjustment layer. So that there can be massively powerful, so definitely play around with that. Now, you've got the foreground color, so now if I was to go to the um, brush tool by hitting B, it's gonna paint in my foreground color, okay? So I can go eyedropper tool, I can select, say, this orange, and then I can go B for brush, and now it's changed it to that color. Massively powerful. But what if I wanna add two different colors? So I have a background color as well, that's the second square down here. Now, I'm in the eyedropper tool up here, and if I want to select my background color, I hit down, hold down option, and then click, and now you can see the background color, and it's the same over here, it's just duplicated. So I can change my foreground color by hitting regularly, and then let's make the background color a purple by holding option, and then we select that, and then we've got a purple, two different colors. Now let's go to the brush tool, and I can, let's create a new layer, Command Shift N, like so. And now I'm coloring with my foreground color, but if I hit X, that flips around those colors. And I hit X again and it flips it back. So you can see, just by using a few shortcuts, I can actually rotate these. Now you can also do it by clicking this button just here, which makes it really nice and simple. Now, if you want to quickly set it to black and white, so if you were using an adjust, a, a layer mask, for example, so let's add a layer mask to this, hit X and let's, we can, color sections out because we're coloring in the color black because usually you want to be using only black and white. Now quickly to get to that, you just hit the button in the top left and that makes it black and white, which, make, which kind of just resets the entire thing and allows you to go into those things. But then go back to the eyedropper tool and we can go back in again, making sure that this option is not selected. Oh. If we come off of the layer mask, sorry, and then we're up here, and now I can start selecting colors again, I can use option, and I can select the foreground and background. So you can see, really powerful. Now, let's quickly move on to some other options. Down here, I have my color panel. So I like to have this live so I can always just move around this, I can move my hue up here, and then I can select something over here. Now, if you double click on this, this is what's gonna bring up your color picker panel. Now this is really important because there's loads of things going on in here. And you may just think, okay, well I'm in here, I click outside of this and it changes it in there. Yep, that's what it does, quite powerful. But now there's some other options in here. So I have HSB, which is hue, saturation, and brightness. Now the way that works is this. Hue is on this section here, so that's essentially the color. So let's go within our yellows, okay? So that's my hue, is at 47 degrees. Now, saturation is my left and right, so pure white, uh, no saturation, all the way over to 100% saturation. And then up and down is my brightness, is 100% brightness and 100%, well, 0% brightness, black. So you can see that each corner will go from pure white through all of my gray tones to pure black, and it'll be 100% saturation of my color all the way down to pure black with zero saturation of the color. 
So this is really helpful so you can see what you're doing. You then have your RGB settings for your colors. You have your lab settings and your CMYK, which you're using for print. Whatever, that's just code. They're really useful to use if you know what your CMYK is, for example. But there's other options too. There's this one down here, and this is what's called your hex code. So essentially, this, if you're ever doing a project online and you need to add a very specific color, this code is read by the internet. So you can type that in. It only works if you understand these things, but that's where you get your hex code from. Now, a few other things to make note of in here. Let's stay in our yellows, let's go 100% and we can see some little boxes appear. Now, what we have, the first box here means that it's not web safe. And if I click on that, it will go to the nearest web safe color, which meaning if I posted this photograph and I added this color to it, this color would not appear on the internet. It would have to be changed in the browser to something else. So you can select web only colors and it's going to actually give you a more specific amount of colors. Now there's a lot less of them, but you know that your image is gonna look great. Essentially, when you press save for web inside Photoshop, this is how it converts your colors. That's basically what happens. So really, really powerful, the swatch tool with lots of options that you can get into. Now, the next thing I want to show you is down here. Now, once you select something, if something is outside of a printable range, you get this little sign here. Now, if you click on that, it will move it to the nearest color, which is that, or it might come up saying that could be either be printable, gamut. Now, that's very technical. We get onto that in another tutorial, or it might be your web safe images. So if you're somewhere where it's not, you click on it and it's gonna move it to one that it is. Great. Now, next thing that we're gonna move on to today is quite simple, but it's absolutely amazing. And this is your swatches. Now, let's open swatches. It's just here, if you don't see this, you're gonna go view, and you're gonna come down all the way down here, and you're gonna go to swatches. And it's gonna bring it up just like this. Now, it's really, really fantastic how the swatch panel works, actually. So this is the standard swatch panel. Now, you see it looks like a random amount of colors. If I actually narrow this side panel down, you're gonna see they're all gonna line up to my reds, my yellows, my blues, and my greens, etc. So you can see it can be very useful with that. Um, let me just quickly reset this, because I like it a little bit wider. There we go. So I'm inside my swatches. Now, these are the swatches that come with it, so I have a quick select range of colors, and I can select a color. For example, let's go into the paint, and I can paint in this color. Let's do it on the new layer. I can paint in this color, then I can select this color, I can paint that color. Sorry, I didn't select it, this one, like so. I can go through and select my different colors. Amazing. Now, this little top section here is the last set of, I think it's uh, 20 colors that you've selected. So for example, I drop a tool, if I go through, and select my different colors, you can see that's my quick selection. So for example, if I was just coloring with this blue, and I was coloring with it, and then I was coloring with this, and then this, and then I was doing this one. And then I was like, oh, I selected one of these blues in here, but I can't remember which one it was. Well, I have it in my memory bank up here, and it puts it back to the beginning. So it means that I can always find those last 20 colors again. And that can be an absolute lifesaver. So let's now talk about building your own swatches. So in the side panel here, you've got all sorts of different swatch swatches that Photoshop comes with and different versions come with different types of swatches included with all sorts of different colors, which are massively powerful. But sometimes we want to build our own swatches. So let's build a swatch from this and it's very simple to do. Anytime you want to reset your swatches, you just hit reset. It's going to say, do I want to save these? I'm going to say, um, sorry, do I want to replace them? Yes, I want to replace them. It's back to the default Photoshop ones. Now, I can add a swatch easily by say selecting a color. So we'll hit I for eyedropper. Let's select this pink over here. And then all I have to do is click down here and it's just gonna bring up this thing and say new swatch. So I'm gonna call that pink, okay? And then it will add it to the bottom. Now that's part of my swatches. If I get rid of close Photoshop and come back, it's gonna still be there. Now I can save this as a new swatch. So that will save all of this panel as a brand new panel which can be powerful, but actually what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna go in here and go preset manager, 
and I'm going to select, all, now inside this actually, you can move your colors around. So you can actually rearrange your colors so I could move all of my yellows into a line if I really wanted to. But I'm going to hit the bottom one, shift, top one, I'm going to hit delete. Now I'm going to hit done and it's deleted all of my swatches. So now essentially I could go, well, I want to, I want to have this, it's not pure black, but it's my darkest color on here. And you can name all of these. I'm going to save time by not doing that. And this is my next darkest color. I want a bit of a lighter purple. Um, well, let's just save uh, the pinks in here. That's what I want to go in there. And I wanted the purples to be saved. That's going to go in there. And all I'm doing is clicking on a color, then clicking over here. And it's just going to bring it all in. And you can see that I am building up a swatch set of this image here. Now, say I'm happy with that. That's a really great swatch set and I can keep on building my own swatches really, really easily. And then from within this, all you have to do is you just have to go into um, save swatches and that's it. Now save swatches saves it to Photoshop. Save swatches for exchange is good for Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator and other Photoshop um, Adobe products as well. I'm, I'm not sure of all of them. And that's basically it. Now there's different views of this too. So let's come, let's just reset the swatches like so. Okay, I don't want to save that. There we go. And now my views, I can essentially, I often like to have it as a large list. So this gives me a list and it gives me my colors. So I actually have a reference to it. Okay, and that can be really powerful. My final tip that if you have, if you ever want to fill a layer, it's gonna fill it with your background color and all you have to do is hit option and delete and it's gonna fill that layer with your, um, whichever color you have selected. So I'm gonna have that one selected now, I'm gonna hit option delete and it's gonna change it to that one. I'm gonna come into this green and I'm gonna go option delete. That's a really great way for filling a layer really, really quickly. Okay, so if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel because I've got loads more videos coming in the future. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune.